Hi, everybody. I'm Jan Zuha. I'm a humanities and outreach librarian here at MSU, the MSU Library. And I am really pleased to have you join us here. Um, we are always interested here at the library in stress relief. We watch students have a lot of stress at certain times in the semester, and we try to give you programs that will help you de-stress. And our Pause to Distress program is one of those. It's very important that you practice self-care during the semester to make sure that you can do your very best work. So that's why we do things like Libraries Pause to Distress events. And in fact, I have one of our major helpers with Pause to Distress here with me today. This is Nancy Rosen. Nancy, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. I have been with Mountain Therapy Animals since 1998. So that would be 22 years now, I believe. And I'm the Bozeman coordinator of Intermountain Therapy Animals, henceforth ITA. And uh, basically I brought it to Bozeman from Salt Lake City. And so- Thank you. <laughs> it, it's been my pleasure. Yeah. It's been um, basically my, who I am and what I do. Um, this is my partner, Lily. She's actually my fourth therapy dog. She's five now and loves and loves and loves to meet people. What kind of dog is she? Lily is a poodle. She is standard? A standard poodle. poodle. Okay. Yes. And she was, she was just made pretty for this event. She was. Yeah. She was just groomed on Friday. <laughs> and um, of course, I had to touch up the poof before we came. <laughs> so. And do you yeah. find that, um, that your dogs are really helpful with stress relief? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I live near here and I'm on campus all the time and even not during the official cause to distress. Lots and lots of students will want to pet the dogs mm -hmm. and talk about their dogs that they have at home. And so, yeah, it's made a huge difference. And how many years now have we been doing cause to distress? Seven or eight years, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a long time. And I know it's grown in popularity. You know, it was a real risk for us because typically libraries don't have in the past right. not wanted any animals in the in the building, you know. For reasons mostly of cleanliness, keeping resources fresh, uh, and that sort of thing. But you know, also safety. And we're really happy to have the specially trained therapy mm -hmm. dogs because they're always very well behaved. And their owners are always keeping them very clean and making sure that there's no mess in the library. Mm -hmm. So that's incredibly helpful. And so we have hundreds of students who come by and we've typically done pause to distress at the end of each semester when mm -hmm. some of the stress is the highest mm -hmm. with all the exams, but also we're doing it now at different times throughout the semester, you know, when, when we sense that there's a need. And we always get hundreds of students. And if we don't have enough dogs, there's a problem because students pile up like three yeah. deep in order to get yeah. near the dog, even if they can't touch it. So it's great. And, you know, we hit, we get really great feedback from, from students on nice. I don't know if you have heard some of the comments that we've gathered. We try to ask them to leave a comment mm -hmm. when they go. We've had people say things like, I was about to cry and now I feel like I can get back to it, nice. which is so great. Nice. Or um, the dogs took my mind off my workload. I relaxed a ton and couldn't stop smiling. So we know from those kinds of comments that you guys do great work. Thank you. We really, really appreciate it. We do it over a series of days in finals week. And I know that there are students who come every day. I've yeah. seen this, I've observed this. So that it, it truly is an important touchstone for them when they're feeling this high stress. Um, could you, could you tell us overall about Intermountain Therapy Animals, the mission? Or, you well, say you brought it here from Salt Lake. I did. I did. Intermountain Therapy Animal has is, is been going about 30 years. The mission is to enhance the quality of life through the human-animal bond. Excellent. And our motto is pets helping people. And so um, we have mostly dogs, as you would imagine. We have quite a few cats. Difficult for the cats though. Um, first of all, they have to travel. Yeah. And cats in the car, not always so good. <laughs> and it takes a really special cat, but when you have a good cat, they're extraordinary. And we've had bunnies, guinea pigs, 
donkeys. We had Oliver the donkey we one did. year. We did. He was a huge hit. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he even came in the front. He, the... Wait, he came in the foyer area. Yeah. We didn't. We could not bring him all the way into the library. Well, but... it was raining. It was a nasty yeah. day. And then apparently the next day, he it was sunny and he came out and stood outside. Wonderful. Yeah. And after that, um, his his owner told me that he was just marching around the barn, insisting he wanted to go somewhere. Oh, he wanted more attention. <laughs> he loved it. He was terrific. So the animals actually yeah. get something out of this too. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Most of our attention is how are the dogs? And we, the owners go through a full day workshop. We meet the first and kind of gauge whether or not the dogs truly want to meet people, engage with people. And if the owners have a good relationship with their dogs. And then the owners go through a full day workshop and then we do an evaluation with the owner and the animal. And it's mainly to make sure that the animal is suitable. We don't just allow anybody no. in no. because if the dog is stressed and much of our workshop is geared towards watching your animal, gauging how they're doing. Are they still enjoying the interaction? I know I've had over the, the various therapy dogs I've had, I've watched them get less and less engaged and know to retire them at that point. So their attitude towards the changes as they age. Age, sometimes. yeah, it's, it's a number of factors. Yeah. Sometimes they just don't enjoy it. Yeah. And then, um, you know, it's a hard thing because the owners really want to do it but if the dog doesn't then you're running into problems right. potential problems you're creating stress which we don't want to do <laughs> no no and and interestingly at the library the students not only engage with the dogs and the dogs love it mm -hmm. this is one of their favorite things i mean they have circles of hands all over them yeah. and many of them are, will be upside down at that point yeah <laughs> but the students talk to each other yeah. and so that's a nice thing and you said wait, earlier that the students often talk to you about their animals at oh, home. Yeah. What, what are some of the, have you, do you remember any of the interesting things you've heard from students? Well, about, about the dogs they have at home or the cats they have at home. You know, they miss them or, yeah. or whatever. And they'll have, they'll have um, certain choices too, because we will usually have maybe three dogs at a time, especially mm -hmm. during the busy, right. busy times. They'll have definitely desires. They, they want to go to the golden retriever or they want to go. And, you know, I, I don't, I try not to. Because <laughs> of course my dog is the best. Yes, of right. course. Yeah. I have observed that the students and the handlers, the owners of the dogs often have some really great interactions. And that's really wonderful. That's like a sort of touchstone with home talking to sure. someone who has their dog with you. Um, and it's fun to talk to them. It's, it's, okay. Good girl. So, um, how you know? How do you personally like to de stress? Oh, I do a lot of hiking mm -hmm. and uh, walking. Hiking, walking. Mm -hmm. um, With your dog, of course. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that goes without saying. Right. <laughs> I can't go anywhere without it. Um, that's pretty much it right now. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is so different in terms yeah, of exercise, right. and I, I read. I'm yeah. glad to hear you read. That's wonderful. Well, didn't we meet at the country bookshelf? We did meet at the ago? country bookshelf. That's yeah. right. That yeah. makes a lot of sense then. Yeah, well, you know, we, we love having you as part of our sort of array of de-stress and probably the you're the jewel in the crown. Intermountain Therapy Thank Animals you. and Paws to Distress is our really most popular really? one. We do have other resources. We have things like a whole lib guide on de-stressing now, um, which you can find online. And I don't know, Nancy, if you knew this, but we have a treadmill desk on the first floor. Have you ever seen that? No. So there's no. a station on the first floor of the library where you can go and it's set to move only pretty slowly. So nobody's running at this, but you can huh. read a book, you can do some work, you can bring your laptop and actually walk while you work there. So that is something you might want to try out too. Interesting. Um, we also have, since you like to read, we I also do. have an entire extracurricular or recreational, whatever you want to say, reading collection called Bobcat Browse. And it's in the center right by the coffee bar. 
Okay. And the public can check those out as well. But students suggest the books, faculty suggest books. And basically, we want books there that people find easy and fun to read because we know from studies that reading actually lowers your blood pressure. Ah. Yes. Reading and dogs. Reading and dogs. They have that in common. Reading to a dog is even better, hey, perhaps. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a good segue yeah. to our read program. <laughs> there we go. Do, you, do your dogs get read to by at kids? This, yes. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, nothing is happening. Right. Um, basically, right. we're on hold, yeah. unfortunately. Um, we're not volunteering. Yeah. We're not going anywhere. I'm not conducting workshops right now. And this is why we're filming this, because yeah. we know that we yeah. are not going to be able to have Lily and her friends in the library this fall, or we think, but you know, that's pretty much pretty yeah. certain. Yeah, it's a tough time. Um, we we retest our dogs every two years. We're not doing testing. Uh -huh. uh, we're not holding workshops because it doesn't, besides proximity of all the people in the workshop, it doesn't do any good to certify and register new volunteers when they can do no so um it's kind of pointless so yeah. basically everything is on hold at the moment but prior to this the read program is one of our programs it's mm -hmm. reading education assistance dogs we do have cats doing it as well <laughs> it's an incredible program it's been going since 1991 i believe mm -hmm. yeah i think so it's children reading to the dogs yeah. and it takes away the peer pressure, the stress. And Casey, my second therapy dog was in that very first session we had in Salt Lake. She was a little Bichon yeah. and it was great. I mean, I had a little boy come over and say, I'm afraid of dogs yeah. um, and I don't read very well. And I said, it's okay. She doesn't read. <laughs> He read, read her this book that was clearly two or three levels below his age. But he read it and he jumped up at the end and said, this is the first time I've ever finished a book. Oh my gosh. And we high five and it was great. And he came yeah. over later and said, I'm checking this out and taking it home. Oh, wonderful. So um, the read program is all over the world, literally. Yeah. Um, we have over 6,000 teams. Well, and I know that libraries love that. Yeah. Public libraries do. Um, yeah, so you know, there's so many different things that you guys are involved in. It's not just us, and that's great to hear. Um, right, right. I mean, the, we go into a lot of the retirement homes and the hospitals. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, Any anywhere. Our, our dogs, our animals, I should say, uh, volunteer about an hour at a time. And... I often have to explain the difference between a service animal oh, and yes. a therapy mm -hmm. animal. And so that's sort of the first thing I usually do when I'm giving a talk. Right. That's an important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I also, you know, want to point out that there are other campus resources for de-stressing and um, that uh, University Health Partners has programs, including things like health advancement. There's a program called WellTrack. So in, in the um, absence of having actual dogs here on campus this semester, students have some options. And I think we all just need to be really careful about how we're dealing with our stress at this, at this heightened stress time, which adds not just, you know, we don't just have our, our academic performance stress now, we have everything else on top of it. So we really, really appreciate your willingness to come and talk with us this way. And can't wait to, you know, for when we can actually have the dogs again back in the library. Oh, yeah. We can't either. The yeah. dogs can't. The volunteers yeah. can't. Great. Everybody is would love to yeah. start this again. Um, we did do a Zoom um, event with Heart of the Valley. Mm -hmm. With um, they had some summer camps, and once a week for six weeks, they would do a Zoom meeting with one of our teams and the children could ask them questions and the dog was there. That's a really fun idea. Yes. Well, one of the great things about great. this time is that we all get to be more creative about how we deal with things mm -hmm. and we get to think about doing things in new ways. For now, Lily, thank you for joining us. And thank you, Nancy, so much You're for welcome, all of your Jeff. work and You're, for coming here it's today. It's been my pleasure.
It's been great. Thank you. You're welcome.